Hi, welcome to the Feeling Fit Club, a nationally recognized and awarded functional fitness program for older adults. My name is Gretchen Verbeff and I will be your host today. I'm an exercise physiologist, a certified balance and mobility specialist, and an exercise instructor for older adults. The county offers multiple classes around the region. If you're not able to make one today, please tune into our program here on CTN. I would like to remind you to consult with your doctor before beginning today's program or any exercise program. If you're in any pain or discomfort, please stop and consult with a medical expert. My co-host today is Vicki Velasco, a current instructor in the South County. We also have Char, a current instructor in the Central Region. Now, here's what you'll need to take part in our class today. A straight back armless chair, loose clothing, closed toe shoes like a tennis shoe with a rubber sole, water, stretch band, and an enthusiastic attitude. Let's take a quick break while you gather what you need. We'll be back shortly to begin our exercise program. One in six adults has a mental illness. And we face a stigma that can be as painful as the disease itself. Change a mind about mental illness, and you can change a life. Welcome back. If you're standing, please stand next to your chair or behind your chair. Vicki will be demonstrating all the exercises today in a seated position if you are chair bound, you feel uncomfortable doing any of the exercises, or if you're just feeling fatigued. Most importantly, we want you to be safe, comfortable, and we want you to keep moving. So let's get started with our warm up. Let's begin with neutral spine, tummies are in, relax those shoulders, and I want you to stand up as tall as you can, beginning with a toe tap out to the front. Let's begin, out and out. Good. It's important to keep breathing throughout the whole routine. Okay, regular breathing, don't hold your breath. Great job. If at any time you need to stop, take a break and join us when you get a chance. That's it. Let's go into a heel tap. Press those arms back. Little tricep press as we heel tap to the front. Good. Great job. Last one, let's go back to a toe tap. Alternating arm and leg, good. Great job. Keep breathing. Are we having fun? Oh yeah. Good. All right, we're gonna take that toe tap into a leg lift. Lift a little higher now. Thinking about strong core muscles. Our core is the region of our trunk that helps support our posture, helps with our breathing, and all your movement should be coming from your core right now. Let's take those legs out to the side now. Okay, and press the arms out. Vicki's showing an alternative for those of you who are seated. Good, relax your shoulders. Last one, let's take it to the rear now. If you're standing, tricep press to the back. Okay, lift the leg to the rear. Press, 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 press. Press, press. Last one, take it to the side again. Out, out, out. Good, relax those shoulders. We're trying to warm up the body, all the tissues, get the blood flowing, get the oxygen, oxygen moving throughout the body. And to the front again, lift, lift, lift. Nice and tall, good. And now we're gonna cross midline. If you have a bad hip or knee, I would recommend that you just keep your legs going straight in front of you. Otherwise, join us as we cross midline. Cross. We're trying to get some rotation of the hip. Okay, we wanna move that hip into many region, many planes of motion. Okay, good. You know, with the more we exercise uh, our hip, I think the less 
likely it'll fracture if we should fall. But That's we're right. not going to fall. That's right. We want to be prepared. And let's march it out. Good. How's everybody doing? Let's take a deep breath Fantastic. and up. Fantastic. All right. Inhale up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale down. Let's take it into a wide march. Nice and controlled. And let's bring it back in. Okay, the next movement we're going to do is what we call out, out, in, in. We're gonna focus on the legs first, and then feel free to join us with adding some arms if you like. Here we go. It's out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. Out, out, in. Speed it up if you want to. Here we go. Out, out, in, in. Okay, out, out, in, in. As we increase the rate, the heart rate's going up a little bit. Stop if you need to or slow it down. Out, out, in, in. Add some arms now. Out, out, in, in. Good. Relax your shoulders. Out, out, in, in. Out, out. Good job. Out, out, in, in. In, in, last one, and march. Good, how are we feeling? Oh, okay. fabulous. I love when you exercise our hearts because heart disease is the number one killer and we gotta make it strong. We are it conditioning our heart. It is a muscle, <laughs> that's right. Okay, let's lift the heel up now behind us if we're standing into a hamstring curl. Vicki's gonna show an alternative movement for you though, for those who are seated. Okay, here we go. Lift, lift. Press it out, press, press, good. Tricep press back. We want you to keep moving if you can. Press, 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 press. Last one single, we're gonna add a double movement. Double heel lift, double, double, good. Double. Stay at singles if you prefer. You don't have to do doubles. We're just showing an alternative movement. Back to singles now. Press, 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 good. We're, we're warming up big muscles, small muscles, trying to get the upper body and the lower body all warmed up. That way we don't hurt ourselves later in the program. Good. And march it out. Good. Let's slow that march down. We're gonna place our hands on our hips. Seated or standing, we're gonna do some hip circles. Moving our hips around the clock, soft knees. Great job. Core is strong, movement's coming from the hip, not the upper body. And let's go the other way now. Pushing the hips all the way around. As we learn to move our hips better, more efficiently, we're less likely to fall. We can regain our balance better. Good. Let's just move the weight from side to side, side to side. Arms can come up if you want. Hey side baby. Side to side, side to side, side to side. All right, right here, let's go ahead and do some arm circles, working on some range of motion around the shoulder. Tap it out if you want to. That gets the heart rate up a little bit more. Good, and let's reverse those circles, good. Relax those shoulders. All right, let's do front crawl. Rain, big range of motion around that shoulder joint. Good. And back crawl. Okay, hug the ear as your arm comes up. That's it. Stop the feet if you're getting tired, that's okay. Great, now breast stroke. Press the arms out. Open it up, out and open, out, open, good. One more, take your neck, take it, tilt down, over to one side, down the front, over to the other side, down and over, one more time. Great job, let's go ahead and take a deep breath in up, exhale out, 
And that ends our warm up for today. Let's take a short break, grab some water, get hydrated, and we'll be right back to begin our core training and balance exercises. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back. Let's begin our balance training. Starting with neutral spine, I'd like you to think about bringing your belly button in towards the spine. Relax your shoulders. Keep your eyes focused on a target directly in front of you. Think about an imaginary string pulling your head upright to the ceiling. Think about your alignment points, ears in alignment with shoulders, shoulders in alignment with hips, hips in alignment with feet if you're standing, if you're seated, equal pressure under your hips in the chair and under the feet. Okay, neutral spine is the safest and really the most comfortable position to be in when we exercise. From here, I'd like you to go ahead and start with holding onto the chair if you're standing and raise your heels up and hold them. Hold it there, great job. Keep your eyes focused on that target. If you can, cross your arms over your chest to add a little more challenge. Great job, and now place those hands by your side. And now try closing your eyes, taking away your dependency on your vision. Something similar to being when you get up in the middle of the night and you can't see. You have to be able to know where your feet are as you're moving through a dark space. And now release, good. Let's lift those toes up now. We're gonna rock backward, holding onto the chair because the sensation often makes us feel like we're going to fall. So we wanna lift those toes up, working the shin, holding onto the chair as you need it, and then maybe try taking your hands off to your side. We'll keep the eyes open on this one. Great job. Now let's rock it. It's up and back, up, back. Good. And now maybe you can add your arms up over your head and hold them there. Only do what you feel comfortable and safe doing. But we want to challenge those of you who are needing some more challenge today. So it's up and back, up, back. Great job. Up and back. Last one. All right, shake it out. Now we're going to do some tandem walking or semi-tandem walking. Semi-tandem is where you place one foot slightly off to the front and to the side, narrowing that base of support, or tandem where the heel of one foot is touching the toe of the other foot. We're gonna do a dynamic balance move after we stand here first and get used to this position. We'll take four steps forward and four steps backward. Vicki in a seated position will demonstrate just doing two steps in her chair. Okay, holding it right here. Eyes are focused on a target directly in front of you. Got your alignment points, you're nice and tall. Let's begin walking four steps. One, two, three, and four, back. One, two, three. So we're moving on a reduced base of support. Again, one, two, three, four, and back. Two, three, four. Nicely done. Okay, now we're going to do some chair stance. We're gonna have a seat in the chair. Okay, I'd like you to sit with your hands on your thigh, on the chair, or hands across the chest. Okay, we're simply gonna rise up and down in the chair 10 times. And if you can't rise up and down, you may do single knee lifts or a double knee lift like this. Okay, so rising up and down. Two and down. We're working on power muscles right now, which are the quadricep and the hamstring in the upper part of your leg. Down, up, and down, up, and down. Two more, up, 
down, up, and down. Great job. Okay. Now what I'd like us to do is stand up quickly and then rise or sit back slowly. Okay, so we're going to stand up quickly and sit back down slowly. Let's do that. Up and then slowly sit down. Let's press it up high, slowly sit. Power move up, slow and controlled down. Up, slow and controlled down. Good. Up. Do you feel this yet in your legs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Up. Down, the core is strong, up, down, two more, up, down, you're breathing regularly, last one, and down. Great, okay, standing next to our chair, for those of you standing, we're going to do some leg swings, beginning nice and slowly. The right leg's gonna go forward and backward. If you're seated, you can only go forward and then back to the chair. For those of you standing, we're working on full range of motion around that hip joint. So forward, backward, forward, backward. If you can let go, good. There you go. And now, if you feel comfortable, add some arm swings. Forward, backward, forward, backward. We're controlling the movement. Learning how to move our body safely Efficiently is very important when we look at fall redu reduction. Backward, forward, last one, forward, backward. Let's go to the other leg now. Stepping over to the other side of the chair so that you can hold on to it if you're standing or shifting over to the other side of your chair if you're seated. Nice and tall, neutral spine. Let's begin with a slow forward and backward leg swing. Working on range of motion, forward and backward. Good, nice and tall. And when you feel comfortable, add some arms. Forward, backward, forward, backward. Nice and tall, you're standing tall, you're proud to be tall, nice and tall, good. If the arms are confusing, just set them down by your side. Forward, last one. All right, going to the other side of our chair again. We're holding on, I'll come forward in my chair so I don't hit the chair, side to side. Side to side. Okay, you've got the chair there if you need it. Side to side. And now adding some arms if you want to. Okay, moving the hip in a new direction. We're trying to train the hip so that it can respond when we need it to respond. It's usually in an emergency. <laughs> Usually in an emergency, that's right. And stop. Let's go to the other side. We're going to do the same thing, side to side, side to side. Again, holding onto the chair if you need to, placing the hands by your side, or adding some arms. Okay, challenging our balance. Good job. Side to side, last one, relax, good. Okay, the last one's a little more challenging. We're gonna do some rotation of the hip. We're gonna take the, hip, the foot and go forward and then wrap it around the body, tap back. Forward, tap back. And Vicki will demonstrate how far she can go for those of you who are seated in the chair. Forward, back, forward and back. All right, adding some arms if you feel comfortable. Forward and back. Forward, rotation of the spine. Forward, back, forward, good. Last one, nicely done. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, forward and back. Forward and back, forward and back. Add some arms if you're comfortable. Thinking about neutral spine, keeping your body in good alignment. Breathing, forward and back. Good, forward, last time, forward and back. Great job. How are we feeling, okay? Good. All right, moving into some squat work. When we do a squat, our feet need to be a good wide stance, in a good wide stance. That way we have a wide base of support, we're stable. 
If you're seated, you can't do a squat, so you can do some knee raises, knee extensions, abduction, and adduction. Being careful with your knees and your hips, okay? Those of us standing in the squat position, you wanna make sure that your knees drop over top of your toes and your bottom sinks back as if you're going into a chair. Using neutral spine, you're gonna bend down and come back up. My shoulders are not rounding forward. My head is towards the ceiling and my eyes are looking forward, okay? So let's do that four times. Here we go, going down and up. Hold on to the chair if you need it. Down, little pause in the down position. Down, up, one more. Down and up. Holding on to the chair, we're gonna do what's called a rear curtsy. Take the foot from the front and plie, okay? So front and step back from the front. Working on range of motion, a little bit of rotation of the hip. And now if you'd like to add some arms, it's forward and then out, okay? Little plie, okay? Like you're curtsying for the queen, good. Little dip, little knee bend. Last one, you should be feeling this in your quads right now. Let's go over to the other side of the chair and we'll do the other side. All right, starting in the front, we're gonna do a little curtsy. Good, little dip, working some leg strength and rotation. Nicely done, keep breathing. Last one, great, okay. Let's add some hip extension here. Extending that leg behind us. Vicki's gonna demonstrate another activity that you can do in the seated position. Standing one leg back, opposite arm out front. Oops, if you lose your balance, just grab the chair. Hold it there. Your ankle's probably wobbling a little bit. And now switch the arms. Good, and switch, and switch. Hold it there, strong core, switch, 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 last time. All right, let's do the other leg. Okay, extending the other leg out in front, opposite arm, hold it there. Focus on a target directly in front of you that's not moving and switch the arms, switch. And if you're uncomfortable using the arm movements that we're doing, just hold on to your chair or simply place your hands by your side. Good, keep breathing. Last one and that's it. We're gonna take a short break, get some water, hydrate, and we'll be right back to do our strength training exercises. and camp at a San Diego County Park. Go to sdparks.org to book your next getaway with nature. Welcome back. Let's begin our strength training using our stretch bands. I'd like to demonstrate that we have Char using the five pound resistance, Vicki is using 10 pound resistance, and I'll be using the 15 pound resistance. You can simply change the level of resistance on, based on where you hold the band. So as you hold the band further towards the ends, it's easier and as you hold the band closer towards the center, it's harder, okay? So let's begin with shoulder press. Our arms are straight out in front, wrists are straight, okay? A little slight bend in the elbows and no higher than your chest, okay? We're gonna press the hands away from midline. It's press and release. Two, we'll go to 12, we'll hold on the 12th one for three counts. If you're not able to go to 12, stop when you need to 
and join us again. Good. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Four more. Good. Three more. Good. Two. And let's hold this last one. Three, two, one. Very good, release it. You should be feeling that a little bit in your shoulders. Let's roll those shoulders out. And now take the band around the back. You're gonna hold either end of the band. Holding back further on the band to increase resistance. Feet are hip width apart. You want a nice wide base of support. We're gonna press those fists forward. It's one, release. Two, release. Three, release. Four, exhaling as we press. Five, good. Six, seven, good. Eight, elbows come back. Nine, almost there. Ten, two more. Eleven, last one, and hold. Three, two, one, great job. Okay. Coming back to our second set of 12, I'll add a little variation by taking a side step squat. Okay, we're gonna take the band out to the side again. Here we go. It's press, release, press, release. Three, good, four, straight wrist, five, six, good, seven, Eight, keep breathing regularly. Nine, 10, 11, let's hold this last one. 12, three, two, one, release. Good, roll those shoulders out. Your shoulders should be feeling some fatigue by the time you get to your second set of 12. Taking the band around the back, chest press. I'll do a rear step lunge as I press forward. Feel free to join me or just stay stationary or follow Vicki in the chair. Here we go. Press back. And two. Three. Good. Press. Four. Five. Six. Keep breathing. Seven. Eight. Rounding those shoulders slightly. Nine. Good. 10, 11, let's hold it, hold, three, two, one, release, good, all right, work those shoulders out a little bit, we're going to move into tricep press, take the band, fold it in half, all right, your hand will be in the loop and grab your shoulder, the other hand will go below that hip, or on the hip below that shoulder, feet are hip width apart. Nice and tall, we're gonna take that hand and press it straight back to work the back of the upper arm. Let's do it. One, two, good, three, and four, five, six, seven, good, eight, you're breathing, nine, 10, two more, 11, let's hold this last one, hold, three, two, one, release it. Switch to the other side. That's one of the best exercises for the triceps, isn't Toning it? Toning the muscles, that's right, yeah. in the back of the upper arm. It's an important exercise because it helps us with pressing up off the floor, off of our bed, helps us with lifting and carrying things like your grandchild or groceries. Just the beauty of it, <laughs> of not having that little extra wave. All right, we're gonna take the hand, place it down on the hip below the shoulder where you're holding the loop stretch band, and let's press it back. Press. Two. Three. Good. Neutral spine, four, five, Tummy's in, still breathing regularly. Good, press it back. Press, little hold as we go back. Three more, three, two, last one, let's hold it. Hold it, three, 
two, one, very good. Okay, switch to the other side. I'm going to add a step back lunge again with my tricep press. Feel free to join me or stay stationary or seated. Here we go. It's one, two, three. Squeeze that tricep, four, five, good, six, seven, keep breathing regularly, eight, nine, 10, 11, let's hold this one and hold. Three, two, one, release, good. Last set of tricep on the other side. Hold the shoulder, place the hand below that shoulder and let's press it out. One, two, Three, good, four, five, six. We're exhaling as we press, seven, eight, good, nine, 10, two more, 11, last one and hold. Three, two, one, release, okay. Time for bicep curl. You're gonna step on one end of the band with your feet, hold the other end in your hand. Again, holding the band further down will increase some resistance. You don't have to change the color of the band necessarily, just change where you're holding it. Tuck your elbow in, relax your shoulders, nice and tall, and lift. All the way up and down. Full range of motion is important we want to work the bicep all the way through, up and down, up and down. Good. We're not rushing. We're taking our time so that we get the full range of motion and the full benefit. Up, down, up, down. Two more. Up, down. Last one. Great job. Let's switch to the other foot. We're gonna step on the band, take the other hand, grab the band, nice and tall, neutral spine, tuck that elbow in, and let's go ahead. Lift and lower, two and lower, three and lower, four, good, you're breathing. Exhale on the up, inhale to center. That's it, seven, Eight, nine, good, 10, 11, last one, let's hold it, hold. Three, two, one, release, good. Back to the other side. I'm gonna spread my feet out a little bit more because I'm gonna add a little mini squat, All right? Making sure I don't slip off the band holding the band at a good distance so that I have right amount of resistance, tucking my elbow in, slight bend in my knees. Join me if you'd like to add the little squat. It's down and up. Two, keeping my back straight. Three, my eyes are forward. Four, five, good. Six, seven, eight. Are you feeling it yet? Nine, good, 10, should be getting harder. 11, and hold, three, two, one, release, other side. Same movement if you want to add the wide stance squat, the little mini squat while you do your bicep curl. Nice and tall, neutral spine, let's begin. Down and up, full range of motion. Three, and up, four, and up, five, six, neutral spine, tummies in, good, eight, nine, 10, 11, last one, let's hold, three, two, one, great job. Time to sit down. Let's take the band and wrap it around the bottom of both of our feet. 
We're gonna do a two arm row. Placing the toes are up, heels are down. Okay, it's important that we hip hinge, back is straight. Okay, feet are spread apart. When we reach down, we wanna keep our chest lifted and then pull back. Those elbows go behind us. We lift that chest up. Exhaling as we pull. Three, four, good. Working muscles in our upper back. These are muscles that help us with posture. They help us with lifting. They're very important muscles. Good. Pull and release. Pull, release, pull. Let's do two more. Good, let's hold this last one. And hold, three, two, one. We'll just pause right here so we don't have to reposition our band. Take a quick break, and now let's do it again, okay? There we go. Down, pull back. Down. Really accentuate it as you pull back. Good, down. Pull back, this is five. Pull back, and down. You're doing that hip hinge very well. Keeping that chest lifted, eyes are forward. Imagining your hip is like a door hinge. Eyes stay forward, chest lifted. Two more. Pull, let's hold this one. And hold, three, two, one. Great job, okay. Now reposition your band so just one foot is in the band. We're gonna work on our a leg press which is targeting the muscles in the upper leg, your quadricep. Hold the band so that it's up by your rib cage. You don't want to let go of the band as you do the leg press. You want to hold the band and keep it right by the rib cage. Here we go. It's one and up, two, up, three, good, four, up. Leg strength is important in reducing falls. If we have strong legs, we're more likely to be able to recover when we lose our balance. Press, release. Press, release, press. Two more. Last one, hold it. Three, two, one. Sitting up nice and tall, point and flex those toes. Point and flex, point and flex. This, this exercise works our shin and our calf. These are important muscles to work on because they help with foot clearance to get over throw rugs, upstairs, over curbs, keeping the resistance as you pull back on the band. Last one and hold. Three, two, one. Now take the band in one hand, hold it back by your hip of your outstretched leg. If your hip tolerates, we're gonna squeeze that leg towards the bent leg, like this. One, two, three, four, Nice and tall. Five, just a little movement to strengthen that inner thigh muscle which help us, helps us with lateral movement. Squeeze, back to center. Squeeze to center. Squeeze, last one. Squeeze, release. Okay, take the band now and you're gonna cross it to the other hip. Relax those shoulders, looking forward, taking it away from midline. Again, using caution if you have a bad hip away from midline. Two, sitting up tall, breathing. Four, good. Five, six, good. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, last one, and 12. Let's switch to the other foot now. You know, I really highly recommend these for people who don't walk much, who are in wheelchairs or on walkers. This really strengthens these necessary muscles. Absolutely. You're right, Vicki. And they're easy to carry around too, aren't they? Yeah. You can throw them in your purse or in your suitcase. Okay, leg press on the other side. Again, reminding you to hold those bands back by the rib cage. Press away. Two. Good, relax your shoulders. Three, four, five, six, 
Seven. Good. Eight. Nine. Ten. Two more. Eleven. Let's hold this one. Hold. Three, two, one. Point and flex. Point, flex, point, flex, point, flex, point, flex. Good. Five. Relax your shoulders. Breathe. Good. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's hold it. Point, three, two, one. Take the band, hold it back by your hip and squeeze towards the other leg. And back to midline. It's little movement, back to midline. Squeeze to midline. We're targeting that inner thigh muscle group. Okay, they're called adductors, helping us with lateral side to side movements. Sometimes we have to take side to side movements. If we're in a crowded mall, shopping. We have a narrow space we have to get through. This helps prevent falls. Good, squeeze one more. Squeeze, let's switch to the other side. Away from midline. One, two, good. Three, four, we're working that hip. Five, strengthening those muscles that support the hip. Seven, eight, good job. Nine, 10, 11, last one, 12. Okay. Let's take the band out in front, hold it under the palm of one hand. Okay? Oh, I love this one. And we're going to roll that band up under our palm. We race. I know, you race. You have a good time. Yeah. And some know. cheat. <laughs> yes. Right? <we> do. <laughs> and everybody says, oh, she's cheating. That's right. <laughs> so if you're having a hard time, you can always just close it right into your palm. And then what we want to do is work our flexors and extensors. So we're going to just squeeze it, slightly release. Squeeze, slightly release. Squeeze, slight, last time, squeeze, release. Let's go to the other hand, working on mobility of the hand, walking that band. We're trying to keep the wrist straight, walking it up. That's right, they go like this, side to side, right. So just try to use your thumbs and your fingers to walk that band up. Good. Give it a little help. Hold that band. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Good job. All right, let's do 10 tilt backs and then we'll finish up our strength training. So we're coming forward in the chair. It's important to work the abdominal muscles because they help with our posture and our alignment. We don't want to leave those out. So we want to sit up nice and tall, hold the chair or your thighs or cross your arms over your chest and tilt back slowly with a straight back. Again, we're hip hinging. Important to do it with good posture so that we're not throwing our neck and our shoulders into this. Tummy's controlled, release, good. You're breathing regularly, keep going, good. And you can continue on with these in your own leisure time. We can give them a little bit of homework. Keep working on those abdominal muscles. Last one, that's it. Let's take a deep breath in up, big exhale down. Let's take a quick break, get some water, hydrate, and then we'll be back for our cool down and flexibility routine. Bring out the action hero in you. Be part of the greatest action movie ever. Show us how you train and eat like an action hero. Join in at actionheroalliance.com. Welcome back. Let's begin our cool down and flexibility routine. Starting with a deep breath in up. Big exhale out. This time when we reach up, we're gonna grab one wrist and we're gonna lean over to our right. Hold it there, feel the stretch, come down your rib cage. All those postural muscles are stretching out. Come back to center. Inhale big, grab your other wrist and lean to the other side. Hold it there. Good job and come on up. Take those hands, put them together, clasp them together if you can or just press the palms forward and round those shoulders slightly. Breathing through the hold, feel that stretch come from your upper back. Now take the hands behind the back and we're lifting up. If you can't get your hands together, just press those palms up towards the ceiling, okay? 
We want to open up the chest muscles. Keep breathing. Good. Relax. Let's bring the hand across the chest, and we're going to gently pull down and across. Feeling that stretch come across the shoulder. Holding it there. Feel that stretch. Good. Release. Let's get the other hand. We're going to grab the other arm. Hold it there. Feel that stretch. Come across the upper back and shoulder. Good. And release. All right. Let's just do a shoulder roll. That's it. Now the tricep press, uh, stretch. We're going to take that elbow up towards the ceiling. Press on the soft tissue of the arm. As the elbow goes up, you should feel that stretch come across down the arm. And now let's take the hand and walk it up the back, working on our upper body flexibility. Try to get your fingers as close as possible. Hold it there. Good. And release. Let's do the other side now. Tricep. Elbow goes towards the ceiling. Feel that stretch. Come down the arm. And now walk the hand up the back. You may not get very close. We want you to just keep working on it and get as close as you can. Holding it there. Great job. Little trunk twist. I want you to position yourself with a wide base of support. As we turn, we pivot off that hip and we turn the whole hip, shoulder, and neck with the twist, keeping the spine nice and straight. We want to protect the spine at all times. Twist, release to center, twist, Release to center one more time. Twist, release to center, twist, and back to center. Let's go ahead and have a seat and stretch our lower body. Sitting towards the front of the chair, I'd like you to extend one leg out with the heel on the floor, toe to ceiling. Imagine lifting your sternum up, okay? Resting your hands on your thighs or the chair. You're gonna press that sternum straight forward, keeping your chin level with the ground. You should feel that stretch coming up the wow. back. Do you feel that stretch? Yeah. It's a really good stretch. Our hamstrings get really tight. So as we increase our flexibility, we decrease that rate of injury. And release. Switch to the other side. Toes towards the ceiling. Heels on the floor. Lift that sternum. Inhale big. And press forward. Good. Feel that stretch right away. It comes from the calf, the back of the knee, the hamstring, all the way to the glutes and the lower back. Hold it there and then go ahead and release. If you can, lift one foot up and cross it over the other leg. If you can't and you have a bad knee or hip, take that foot down near the ankle. Okay, sitting up tall, nice and tall, sternum lift, and press your sternum forward. Hold it there, feel that stretch as it goes across the hip on the outside of your leg. Good. And release, other side. Sitting up tall first, neutral spine. Take that sternum, lift it, and press forward. Feel that stretch as it goes across the outside of your leg. Hold it there, and release. Okay, let's get the quad and the hip flexor. Extending the leg behind us, okay, toe is on the floor. We're gonna press that heel down towards the floor as we hold on to this chair, okay? Press it down, and as you press, you'll feel that stretch starting from your hip flexor go down the quadricep. All right, we've used that quadricep a lot today. It's really important that we stretch it out. Good. Hold it there, and release. Other side. We're going to extend the other leg behind us. Toes on the floor. Press that heel down, and as you press, feel that stretch come down the front of your leg. Good and release. Okay, sitting square on the chair, we're gonna go ahead and face forward, lift one foot, ankle rotate, add some wrist rotation. It's important to keep our ankles flexible, mobile, we use them all day long. Let's rotate the other way. Good ankle mobility means a reduce in fall risk. Good, and let's place that leg down, lift the other foot up, rotate again, Add some wrist rotation. It's good coordination, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and let's rotate the other way. All right, and release. Taking your palm out in front, we're gonna pull those fingertips gently back towards us. Hold it there. 
Turn the hand down, gently pull back. Other hand, fingers are up, gently pull back. Turn the fingers down, palm out, pull back. Great job. Let's tilt the head to one side, gently pull down, press the opposite arm away, stretch the neck out, rotate. And back to center, tilt the head to the other side, gently assist, press the opposite arm away, rotate. Feel that stretch come down your neck. Good job. Back to center. Let's take a deep breath in up. Big exhale down. Big inhale up. One more. Inhale up. And big hug. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I'd like to give a special thank you to Char and to Vicki. Vicki, do you have anything you would like to add for today? Thank you for the opportunity. I just want to let you know that we want you to please practice these, these classes every day. Just keep, keep practicing. It doesn't matter if your form, if you say, oh, I can't do that. You can, you can just try. Many of you that are home have, a, have illnesses that cannot be cured, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, maybe a heart condition. I've had people in my classes that were home before that recently suffered a stroke. And they're trying to get over that. I have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema. And if it weren't for these classes, I would probably not be able to do hardly anything. But these classes have given me a new lease on life, a new lease on using other muscles to help me breathe better. You can do it. I want to thank the county administration and certainly County TV Network for being supportive of us and the staff of Aging and Independent Services, especially the Health Promotions Group and especially Gretchen, who I call when I have somebody that can't do an exercise, she tells me how to modify it. So don't give up. You will get better. Your body will, will respond to you. That's what we're here for. And maybe we'll see you in one of our classes soon. But thank you for joining us. Stay with us, because I know you're going to feel better. Make sure you keep moving this weekend, and stay tuned for a Feeling Fit Club health highlight. You, as older adults, should be talking with your own physicians about having bone densitometry or a bone scan. And the reason for that is that it is the way that the disease known as osteoporosis is diagnosed. And without having that done or waiting until you fall and break your hip and then the doctor says, oh, you have osteoporosis, um, we can tell well ahead of time um, how strong your bones are. So osteoporosis also known as the brittle bone disease, is simply a loss of bone mass or the amount of bone contained within, with, within all of the bones in our body. And in addition, it is a change in the structure or, or the microarchitecture of bone, such that over time, bone becomes more brittle and weaker so that it doesn't take much more than a, a slight fall to cause a bone to break. So this machine called dual energy x-ray absorptiometry, or we abbreviate it and call it DEXA for short, is a very low dose x-ray machine that allows us to scan your body very comfortably. You simply lie on the table and we can scan different bones in your body. The one that's on the screen right now is the hip joint or the upper part of the hip. And this, of course, is an area that will break. And we, we hear a lot about hip fractures in older adults. So a scan will measure the hardness or the density of your bones. And then the software in the machine then allows us to actually quantify how much bone you theoretically have lost since you were a young adult. We reach our peak bone density in our 20s. And after that, we maintain it until we're about 40 or so, and then we start to lose. 
Women in particular lose a greater amount during menopausal years, and then both men and women are going to continue to lose bone with age. It's just part of the aging process. Another site in our body that is susceptible to fracture is our spine. And here we have a skeleton of our spine showing all of our backbones, which are called vertebrae. In our youth, we have this gentle S-shaped curve. And as we age, our spine becomes weakened, just like other bones. And these vertebrae are very susceptible to being crushed, in part because of just normal aging, but also in part because of lifestyle habits that are not good for us. Mainly, if you think about your head being attached up here and the weight of your head, it, it, and if we sit many hours a day at a computer or a desk or on the couch, we tend to lean forward or bend our spine too much. And over time, we exaggerate this curve until we get to a point where the bones then really do crush. And then that becomes osteoporosis of the spine. There are, however, lifestyle things you can do to slow the loss of bone and to prevent this excessive curvature of the spine that we sometimes think just is a natural part of aging. It really is not. The main thing that you can do is think about your posture while you're sitting, standing, and, and moving. If you think about it, we tend to spend a lot of time sitting and we, we like to, or we, our bodies just naturally start to bend forward. So we have to fight against that by being very conscious of upright posture, shoulders back, tummy tucked in. Also, there are exercises that you can do. In, in fact, Gretchen does many of these exercises with you, but you may not have realized what they're for. Doing exercises to strengthen the back, strengthen the core. I know Gretchen talks about the core often, and exercises to stretch out the front or our chest muscles. These are all really important, and we should be doing them almost on a daily basis.